Yeah. But yeah. I think it's a very great idea. I think it's one of the smartest things you can do. But you're like I said about you got to go about once a year and get them out. You yeah. Know, and and they, they've got to be in a place where where human beings are not really going to go to. You know, otherwise, sooner or later, somebody will stumble across it in some way, shape or form. Yeah, I had like I said, I had this PVC pipe over here and I've got the video on my channel. I had it buried for about a year, but in that PVC pipe, I had it sil a, a silicone around the, the the whole top and the bottom of it, and just I mean sealed up super tight. It was only in the ground for about a year or so, and everything in it I had ammo in it and plastic bags and and all sorts of things, and everything was fine in there. I had a little Gerber knife in there, um, and it was fine. Nothing got real wet, but again, it was only in there for about a year, uh, yeah. but it was sealed up pretty well. I think that's. If you're going to do something like that, I think that may be with that PVC pipe. It's going to handle the the elements a little bit better mm -hmm. uh, and make sure it's sealed up good. But, uh, yeah, depending on your situation and if you have time to do it uh, if, and if you think it's going to be useful, uh, I'd maybe I'd maybe put one out to test. <laughs> yeah. Stick it out there for a little while and, and yeah. see what happens before well, you put some good stuff do, in there. Yeah, do the research, too. You know, find out where the... Um, um, it's not the water line, but the um, what, what's what's the line that they use on the maps that tells you how deep where the water is? Oh, uh, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I'm drawing chat. a blank now. <laughs> Somebody put it in the chat. But you know what I'm talking about. It's like if you dig deep enough, you will hit water. Yeah, um, yeah. Some places you just can't get away with that. You know, you can't dig it deep enough. And if you dig it too deep, you might literally just dig, be digging right into water and you just wasted your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, contour lines, broken nomad was talking about, but that's uh, the water table. Brandon Butler was. There you go. There yeah. you go. Yeah, we got it. There you go. Brandon. Yeah, contour lines is what I was thinking on a map, yeah. <laughs> on a topographic yeah. map. Yeah, but water table, yeah. Yeah, find um, out I, where you, what your water table is, man. Yeah. Well, I should have, and the reason I should have known that because I've been doing a lot of research, well, for the last two years, been researching wells, and mine is 175 feet down. I was going to get one of those hand pumps. <laughs> That's not happening. Good luck with that. Yeah. Yeah. How'd he die? He was pumping water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He died thirsty. I'd, I'd have to make the kids move back in, put them to work. Just pumping water. Everyone take a shift. <laughs> uh, the other thing that changes too, and I think this is the big one, uh, that, that got me thinking about this because 10 years doesn't seem like it just seems like it, you know it seems like forever ago that I started this and you look back uh, and life goes so damn slow but when you really think about it you look back and all of a sudden it's like holy crap <laughs> my rides my rides you know I'm over the hill now now we're going down the hill and it's almost over <laughs> but our uh, and I think Prepper Potpourri was in her video. She's talking about foods that don't expire. And in the beginning of that video, she talked about us having expiration dates as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a big factor when you're talking about your preparedness plans, your skills and all that stuff. So uh, and kind of what you were talking about with your bug out bag. Ten years ago, the my physical condition and what I planned on doing were completely different than what my plans are now my kids still lived in the house back then uh, a lot of things have changed over the course of time so as you get older in preparedness and honestly i, I mean i'm not quite to that point yet but there does come to a point in your life too where it's like okay you know what i've done the best that i can and you know there's there's not really much i can do at this point i'm not at, at some point you get to the age where you're just not hoofing it 40 miles it's just not going to happen yeah. Uh, or you have physical conditions, you rely on medications, all those things. You've got to sort of come to grips with the fact that that's just the way that, that life is. And I think that's another thing that changes with our preparedness. We try to sort of pivot and figure out, you know, ways to uh, incorporate certain things into our preparedness plans to kind of mitigate the, uh, the uh, not the losses, but the uh, you know, mitigate the the dangers and, and things like that. But sometimes you just got to, you know, you got to be, you just got to be okay with the fact that, Hey man, I'm, I'm as good as I can get. And, you know, and hopefully, hopefully the big bad, you know, the, the you know, the big bad things, the marauders and all that don't come to my door, but if they do, uh, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to, I'm going to okay corral it basically and, and do the best I can. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
one thing, uh, let me see where we're at here. Uh, if anybody's got anything in the chat, um, I'll, I'll try to look at those. And if you guys have any questions, any thoughts on things are changing and all that, but I did want to get into a little bit about uh, you were, you were talking about moving and things like that and making trips. And I was talking to Lisa the other day and, and going to the gas station. Um, it's, it's kind of frustrating a little bit because you go to the gas station and you see out here, we're, we're up around four bucks a gallon. And right now it's a little bit less than that. So you hear these people talking about how all oh, the gas prices are going down. And it, it really is frustrating because it, it is sort of that frog in the boiling pot of water thing. The, and this is not just gas prices. This is inflation in general. Uh, but it really is frustrating because a year and a half ago, maybe a year ago, Everybody was completely up in arms about this stuff, right? The gas price is this, but the gas price is that. These days, everybody's just kind of like, oh, it's the gas prices. Hey, now they're down to three fifty a gallon. That's, you know, it's getting better. So they get us used to this crap. And then, you know, th then the new normal becomes that three, four bucks a gallon, where it should be two bucks a gallon. Shoot, I remember when I first got my license, it was, uh, I think it was like 96 cents or something like that. Yeah. Uh, what are uh, gas prices out there where you are? Uh, they've actually been coming down kind of rapidly over the last week. Uh, it's it, it, it was sitting right at uh, I want to say three fifty nine for months on end. Like nobody would go over that. Uh, and then uh, just in the last week, it dropped almost twenty cents. So it's it's very it's it's very fickle. It's very fickle, but. Don't let the, don't let that dissuade you from storing gas or or you know doing anything. Smile, LP. You look pissed. I this is what, <laughs> this is what twenty years in the core does, and another thirteen years working for the DOD does. Everything is a terminal <laughs> glance. You'd be like all the time. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but uh, no, you know, I mean, there's you know, I made, I, made, I made a video the other day about it, and then uh, you know, it, it didn't really get any traction because the YouTube algorithm. I hadn't made a video in a month. You know, um, but uh, I had a friend, a friend of mine had sent me something. We'll, we'll just say that he probably shouldn't have sent it to me. And the video was about uh, the uh, the Panama Canal and how they're having real problems with getting the ships through it. Uh, right now, there's over 200 ships on each side of the Panama Canal, either the, both the north and the south locks. Um, so and that uh, that actually is basically 40 percent of whatever they send to the United States from Eastern Europe, from the Middle East, so on and so forth. So when the when the oil doesn't come over here that we're buying now instead of making, you can expect the price of gas to go through the roof. Uh, and there are some estimates that it could w go well over $10 a gallon. Um, but will that happen? There's no telling. There's no telling. But the, the traffic jam is real. You know, so the prices are going to go up now, like you were saying, feeling like that, uh, you know, you're feeling like the, the frog frog in the uh, the boiling pot of water and how they're slowly turning it up. And that's exactly what they will do. You know, they, they, it won't be, oh, my God, it's finally reached the pains here. And then next thing you know, it's seven dollars a gallon. No, that's not what they'll do. Uh, they, they'll just slowly raise it. And here's the funny thing. Gas prices should be going down at the end of this month because that's when they stop doing the um the summer uh what is it uh, they, they they mix fuel differently from from summer to winter uh and at the beginning of october is when they start selling the winter blend which is actually cheaper so the prices should be going down but my guess is that they will start to go up and then you know, all the other different little things. But yeah, you start to feel like that you're the frog and and you're just knee deep in everything. Yeah, yeah. Knee deep. Knee deep. <laughs> hey, Jammer said uh, with all the hybrids and electric cars, shouldn't the demand lower the price? And y you would think that as well. And Lisa and I were talking the other day too about, the, you know, the holiday, se the, the week, the Labor Day weekend and all that. Gas prices go up. So, you would think that, I mean, it's all just a, a scheme to make money, I think, mm -hmm. because you would think that with that, it's not like the holiday creeped up on them and they didn't know that the holiday was coming. So they should have ramped up production. You know, we, mm -hmm. we do that in our own daily lives. We know that when 
when I'm going to need a certain more of a certain thing, we make sure we have more of a certain thing. You'd think that gas companies could do the same thing, but they don't because, and, and you know, uh, gas companies, meat companies, grocers, all that stuff. But I, I think they don't because they know that this is an opportunity to, to pad the bottom line a little bit and people are going to be more accepting of it because it's, oh, it's just, it's the holiday gas prices. It's this or it's that. So uh, it's, that's, you know, the whole supply and demand thing kind of, kind of bothers me when it comes to fuel because there's just so much money being made with all this stuff. And this goes from the gas companies to the politicians to all that stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people forget too, that these gas companies, their primary mission, the leaders of, of these large big blue businesses, their job is to make sure that the shareholders make money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if the, if the shareholders made a buttload of money last quarter, uh, you know, they expect to make a buttload of money this quarter. And if you start to do things that are good for the consumer and not for the shareholder, then they throw a fit. They, they, they have failed at their primary job in running that company. So keeping those shareholders, you know, and, and, and if, if you look at the end of the year stuff, that's when, that's when the, the prices really go up because the shareholders want that end of the year bonuses. They want, they want to close out their annual stock portfolio on a high, you know, so people need to remember that there, there are people that own that business that want their money. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Tiger said here, uh, tip, if you store gas, get summer blend. Uh, it doesn't go bad as fast as uh, or evaporate as much. Try to store real gas, not the the methanol stuff. Uh, I didn't. I'd never even thought about that. I don't even know that. So I just, whenever it's it's the price is low, that's when I get it. And and these days it's never low. I guess it's lower is the yeah. the correct vernacular these days. Yeah, and you know he's absolutely right. That blend does last longer, uh, which is one of the reasons. He, so it costs more money to make that blend because it does last longer. So they don't have to add the different chemicals, things like that. They don't have to put it such a, 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 a strong refining process, but you know, in the end, in the end, it, it's, you know, I agree with, I agree with what he's saying, but I can tell you two things about it. One, I just uh, put a little bit of the, uh, uh, what is it? Um, um, Stay bill. Uh, uh, no, I don't use stable because it has a dye in it that, that uh, can coat parts. Um, ah, someone put in the chat, the one they use on boats, that's the one I use. So it comes in the white can. Um, I'm going to have to re-listen to this podcast and yeah. write all this stuff down. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, and, and then use the gas. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if your gas is over a year old, then you, uh, come on, man. You, you're storing a lot of damn gas if your gas is over, is over a year old. Yeah. You know? Um, and, uh, you know, another thing, too, is people talk about gas going bad. Uh, I dare anybody in the chat right now to tell me of the time. There you go. Seafoam. That's what it's called. Um, to tell me any one time that you poured gasoline that was bad into your lawnmower and your lawnmower didn't start. I dare you right now because it doesn't it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. You know, I used I used to actually own a very big boat. And that was the first thing I asked. It had two 90 gallon tanks on it. And I said, you know, what do you do when the, the gas goes bad? And the guy who the guy who owned the boat yard said, Don't worry about that, man. I've gone out to, to boats that haven't started in five years and clean the clean the carburetors and they fire right up. Yeah, it's gonna smoke a little bit, it's gonna stink, but it's still gonna burn. Yeah. You know? So I noticed, yeah. I noticed the chat nobody typed, oh, my gas went bad last year. So <laughs> the truth to that, guys, a little bit of a little bit of real brain fart, epiphany stuff just happened. Yeah. Uh, 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 it, I, I've got something to add to that. But uh, Eagle Lover has said here, uh, Southern Prep One had receipts today for on EV battery placement, twenty eight thousand dollars. Yeah, I've heard that. Uh, yeah. Absolutely insane. Yeah. Uh, one thing, one more thing on the, the, the fuel stuff, the way I do it. And I don't know how you do it or anything, but the way I do it, I've got 25 gallons and maybe I should have more than that. But right now that's what we have. And I've got five cans labeled one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and when I take I, I whenever I go to the gas station, and have to refill, I'll take one of those cans, throw it in the truck and then take that can with me, put it at the end of the line. And that way everything's yeah. getting rotated through. I I do the same exact thing. The, the hardest part of that whole thing is moving all those gas cans in the line. Yeah. <laughs> you think yeah. they 
you think they'd come up with something that, like that, you know, where they would just slide down to you. But no, it's not a big deal. I do the exact same thing. I normally keep about 30 or 40 gallons. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. 